On Sunday, Frederick of Denmark celebrated his 56th birthday, an anniversary unlike any other. It is his first anniversary as king. He was proclaimed king on January 14th, and in these four months he has not been able to iron out the controversies. With this time he will have to face new pressures. Ever since the media storm erupted in November 2023, public opinion in the country has not stopped demanding more transparency from the royal family, as well as more responsible use of resources. What was seen in the compromising photos of Frederick walking around Madrid with his ex-wife Cayetano Martinez continues to be talked about because in that private retreat he used resources deemed public on a whim. The truth is that Federico's freedom of movement during his years as prince, sometimes using helicopters or army planes at his discretion, or spending public funds arbitrarily, was not to the liking of Danes accustomed to values such as prudence and respect for the environment. The Danes, who are used to values such as prudence and respect for the environment, are also perplexed, as they are one of the countries most committed to protecting the planet. It is therefore easy to understand why some social and political circles are up in arms about their king's latest moves. He has been blamed for the unnecessary waste of the royal household's budget, as well as the irresponsible use of vehicles that cause him to commit crimes against the environment. The controversy could not dampen the celebration of the king, who last Sunday came out to greet Frederick VIII from the balcony of the palace, surrounded by his family, as if nothing bad was happening around him. He looked relaxed and smiling that morning, although it was his wife, Mary, who graced the show in a fuchsia-colored dress to match his tie. Their children and Queen Margaret posed proudly beside them. The day went off without a hitch. It was time to ignore the critics who once again chided the king for the mistakes he had made. One of those who demanded an explanation from Frederick of Denmark was Jesper Olsen, president of Transparency International Denmark. According to him, what happened with his Madrid photos is a reflection of King Frederick's lack of transparency. He believes that nothing was known about his trip to Madrid and the other transfers he made without warning, nor was it known how much they cost. You can't pay bills in secret, say the people most critical of the Danish royal house. You don't have to know anything when the royal family travels on private holidays, but if the royals use Danish embassy resources such as cars and a chauffeur as happened during Frederick's visit to Madrid, Madrid, then you can't pay the bill, in secret, Olsen says. If the royals have the opportunity to use embassy resources, it should also be known how often they use them. For example, embassy cars, of course, there may be security reasons why not all details can be disclosed, but as far as possible they should be available to the public, and then a formula should be found, continues the chairman. The royal house has indeed spoken out on the issue. A few months ago, when it was revealed that Frederick had unnecessarily traveled by helicopter for a transfer that could have been done by car, the palace responded as follows. The royal court cannot comment on specific cases of transportation, as they are considered private, but careful consideration is always given to which mode of transportation is most appropriate, they said. The choice depends on logistical conditions and environmental impact. Among other things, the Danish Foreign Ministry has also commented on the issue that has caused so much outrage in the country. It is perfectly normal practice for Danish embassies to freely and unhinderedly provide resources to members of the royal family when they are on a private vacation about which the Danes should know nothing. They insist, making it clear that it is not unusual for a member of the royal family to ask for a car from the embassy, as Frederick did in the Spanish capital, as they provide assistance to members of the royal family in connection with their private trips abroad. The ministry explains that when an embassy provides a favor to a royal person, it does so at no cost to the royal household, however. The direct costs associated with such travel for the royal household are billed, the ministry said.
critics of the royal family complain that we are not told how much it costs to maintain this institution. As is well known, issues involving public money are always under scrutiny. The chairman of Transparency International Denmark believes that Danes should be more aware of how kings and their families spend their families, spend their budgets, the fact is that our constitution is set up in such a way that we have a royal household, and if you don't tell us how much it costs to maintain this institution, then you are contributing to the creation of secrecy. It does not benefit the royal house. On Sunday, May 25th, Frederick ascended to the balcony of Frederick VIII's palace to greet citizens gathered in the square to celebrate his 56th birthday. Although he was the birthday boy marrying Queen Margrethe, dressed in similar outfits, took center stage. It was the mother of the King of Denmark, who generated more passion and applause. She enlivened the crowd and very effectively shouted hurrah for her son. I in a world where the line between public duty and private life is increasingly scrutinized, King Frederick of Denmark finds himself at the center of a storm that challenges the very foundations of royal privilege and responsibility. Celebrating his 56th birthday, his first as king, Frederick's reign has been anything but smooth sailing. The controversies that have marred the initial months of his rule reflect a deeper demand for transparency and accountability from the Danish monarchy, a demand that resonates with broader societal values of prudence, environmental responsibility, and fiscal transparency. The incident in Madrid involving the use of public resources for a private retreat with his ex-wife, Cayetano Martinez, has become a symbol of the king's perceived disregard for these values. Such actions, seen as a continuation of the liberties he took as prince, have sparked widespread debate about the appropriate use of public funds and the environmental impact of royal transportation choices. The Danish public, known for their commitment to environmental stewardship, finds such behavior particularly egregious. Despite the controversies, the royal family's recent public appearance was marked by a show of unity and celebration. King Frederick, alongside Queen Mary, Queen Margrethe, and their children greeted the public from the palace balcony embodying the enduring allure of monarchy even in the face of criticism. This moment, however, does not overshadow the pressing issues at hand. Transparency International Denmark's Jesper Olsen's call for clarity on the royal family's use of resources underscores a broader societal demand for openness. The responses from the royal house and the Danish foreign ministry emphasizing logistical and security considerations offer some justification but fall short of fully addressing public concerns about the costs associated with maintaining the royal institution. As King Frederick's reign progresses, it is clear that the Danish monarchy is at a crossroads. The challenges he faces are not merely about personal discretion or the specifics of a single trip, but reflect broader questions about the role of the monarchy in a modern democratic society that values transparency and accountability. She, the royal family's ability to adapt to these expectations will be crucial in maintaining public support and ensuring the institution's relevance in the 21st century. In conclusion, King Frederick's early reign highlights the delicate balance between royal tradition and the evolving demands of a society that expects its leaders, even symbolic ones, to embody the values they espouse. How the Danish monarchy navigates these challenges will not only define Frederick's legacy but also shape the future of the institution he leads. What the path forward requires more than regal pomp, it demands a commitment to transparency, responsibility, and a genuine engagement with the concerns of the Danish people.